Lord. Oh, but you got to know who you serving to do that. Amen. Come on. Luke chapter 11. Verse, I mean, verse 22. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 22. Verse 3. Let me show you something here. It's time for us to get right. Stop giving place to the devil. Y'all give place to Satan and you're trying to blame somebody else. It's time for you to blame yourself. Blame yourself if you go to hell. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. I love it. Come on. Verse 1, chapter 22. Luke, you got it? Now, the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priest and the scribe sought how they might kill him, for they feared. We got to kill Jesus, but we can't, we, we can't just run out and touch him because the people going to get us if we touch him. So we got to come up. And now you already got Judas cross town coming up with a scheme. Okay, now how, why you want to kill Jesus? Why do y'all, I don't know why killing keep, why y'all want to kill anybody? Why would you buy a gun to kill somebody? You know, what, what's the purpose? I'm sorry about that. What's, what's the purpose of killing somebody? What you going to get out of it? And then you go to jail and the police catch you and you're going to blame the police for, for you're going to blame the police for arresting you for being a murderer. They disrespected me. So that was worth taking a life. Jesus preached against what they believed that was worth killing him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's because of your heart. Your heart ain't no good. And the devil presents the opportunity to bring out what's already in you. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Verse 3. Look what happened. Then in a Satan in the Judas, surname Iscariot, being of the number of the twin. Then Satan entered. Remember I said Satan enters through the heart. Well, his heart is already ain't no good. You commit so much evil after a while, Satan got full control over you. You know why? Because it ain't nothing good about you from the beginning. And then you keep on doing evil. After a while, Satan got, but you don't think he got control because you think you're doing what you want to do. Oh, hallelujah. Whoever control your emotions control you. Y'all know that? Some of y'all get bent out of shape. Somebody call y'all a nigger. What, what, what's the big deal about the word? I mean, ignorant. I ain't ignorant. I'm, I'm ignorant when it comes to heart surgery. That I don't know. I'm not ignorant when it comes to cooking. I'm not ignorant when it comes to reading. So how, how could I be? How can the word nigger be so degrading to me? It don't mean nothing. That's just a word. Well, I bet you if I call you big head, you won't get upset with you. I'm still talking about you. Why don't that upset you like nigger? Because you determined that you want to be upset over a word that means you ignorant, which all of us are ignorant about something. Amen. Smartest person in the world, ignorant about the word of God. The Bible says that. But y'all let people control your emotion and then you go off on a tantrum wanting to do something and go say, yeah, they called me this and called me, that's why I shot them. Don't you realize that's you? You the one got the problem. Folk call you out of your name every day of your life and they ain't gonna never stop. You decide, check this out, you decide what word carries the most weight. Y'all know that? You decide who say the word how much weight it carries. Somebody that love you can call you fat, won't bother you. Somebody that don't love you call you fat, you gonna have a fit. They said the same word. So why is it so heavy? Because this person said it versus this. Because of you. You make that decision. You make every decision in your life. Stop blaming Satan. Stop blaming your mama. Stop blaming the person on the street. It's time for you to look at the man or the woman in the mirror and blame yourself. Stop finding fault with everybody else. You got the problem. You can call me them names. Don't bother me. Why do they bother you so much? Hallelujah. It's time for us to get right. Stop blaming everybody else for your problem. Satan going to get to you by getting in your heart. You know how he does that? Because it depends on what upsets you all the time. That's why we start off, be ye angry and sin not. Listen, things going to upset us, but let's stop responding to them. When are we going to bite our tongue and say, no, nah, man, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. I know you can't do it overnight, but you can start. You ain't going to accomplish nothing without starting out. Amen. 
Oh, hallelujah. Blessed quietness. I love it. Verse 3, he said what? Then enter Satan into Judas. Now, let's go to the next one. St. John, chapter 13. Next book over. Hallelujah. My job is to provoke you to serve God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't give place to the devil. Stop giving place to Satan, y'all. Y'all give place to him too much because of what you like. Because of what you like. That's what makes you give place to him. Oh, hallelujah. I don't like nobody but Jesus Christ. Because I like Jesus, I'm going to treat everybody else right. Because I like Jesus, I'm going to preach the truth to you. Because I like Jesus, I do what I do. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. St. John, chapter 13, verse 1. What does it say? Let's read. Now, this is, this is, this is John's version of what we just read over in Luke. Amen. So everybody read it. So when y'all walk out of here, y'all can say what the Bible said. Amen? Amen. I like that. Come on. 13 1 says what? Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them. Amen. Now he know he's getting ready to go. Ain't that something? Here's a man. Jesus, I'm talking about, all he had to do was open his mouth and folks fell back dead. Here's a man that spit in the mud, put on somebody's eyes and they could see. Here's a man walked up to a man full of demons and the demon jumped out of the man and started running. Here's a man that walked up to another demon that everybody was scared to go down that street. And the Bible said when that man saw Jesus coming down the street, he got up and started yelling down the street. Hey, what you doing? You going to come to torment me before time? Here's a man that the devil is running from. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Here's a man that the devil is running from. And y'all running from the devil. But you say you got the Holy Ghost. See, I can talk about Satan. He don't mean nothing to me. I know he can't do nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Because I know he ain't got no power. Y'all give him too much power. Listen, you the one got the power. But you relinquish it by running for The Bible said just resist him. We're going to go read that. Just resist him. The Bible said he'll flee from you. He was running from Jesus. And then you say you got the Holy Ghost. Having the Holy Ghost meaning Jesus on the inside. So why are you running from the devil? Because you're scared. You know why you're afraid? Because you don't have God on the inside. And all y'all that do have him by chance and running, y'all y'all sad commentary. Sad. Come on. Did we read 13? And 1, 2, what did he say? The upper, the supper being ended, the devil having now put into, put in what? Put into what? Put it in his heart. Here's a man that done walked around with Jesus three and a half years and the devil is able to put something this low down in his heart overnight. Now, now y'all help me. Now, let's just think like reasonable human beings here. If you really, I'm, I'm going to deal with the men side of it. Men, if you really love your wife, I mean, I'm talking about you really love your wife. Do you think a woman can walk up to you in one night and get you in the bed? That ain't possible. Brother, do y'all agree to that? It's going to take a few times, ain't it? If, if, if it's possible, it's going to take more than one time. If you really love your wife, brother, ain't no woman that fine. You jump in the bed, not the first time you meet them. Now, that's just, that's just common logic there, isn't it? Women, same way. So what make y'all think that the devil could get to Judah so fast on one visit? One visit. Now, see, most of y'all commit adultery and fornication because y'all don't really love your wife. So maybe that's why it's hard for y'all to understand what I'm saying. But if you really love your wife, ain't no woman going to get you in the bed that fast. Do y'all really think that Eve over there when she committed, when she ate of that fruit, did y'all, do y'all really think Satan went to her one time? Somebody that been with God all their born day and Satan could walk up one time and get her to eat that fruit? Do y'all really think that Eve asked her husband to eat of that fruit one time and he bit? How many times your wife or your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend asked you to do something that's wrong to get you and you finally did it? You don't do it on the first time. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Take a few times. A Satan entered through your heart. 
This is how he get to your heart. You entertain what he tells you. When you entertain it, if that woman come to me and I entertain her conversation, the second day I entertain it, the third day she said, let's have lunch together, I entertain it. The fourth day, see every time she keeps, I entertain her. Now I am going to mess up. But I ain't going to mess up on the first time. You understand? Judas had been hanging around Satan listening to him. Hallelujah. The first time one of y'all shot somebody or bought a gun, why it took you that long to do it? Because the first time, you didn't want to do it. Somebody had to entertain you over and over. Somebody had to convince you how bad it was. Somebody had to convince you all of the excitement that went behind pulling the trigger. Somebody had to convince you that it's okay to have sex. Somebody had to convince you, sell these drugs, look how much money you're going to make. Somebody had to convince you. You didn't do it the first time. You thought about it. Because you know folk died selling drugs. You know folk died from having a gun. You know folk died from having sex. So you didn't do it the first time. The devil kept entertaining it, putting, uh, putting it in your mind, and you kept entertaining it till finally he convinced you. Wasn't so he done convinced. Listen to this now. Judas was one of the twelve that walked around with Jesus. Every time Jesus healed somebody, he was there. When he raised Lazarus, he was there. When he healed the blind man, he was there. When the woman grabbed his garment and was healed of the issue of blood, Judas was there. Judas was there when he turned them few loaves of bread and a couple of fish and fed 10,000 and only talking about the men, excluding women and children. Judas was there. So Judas knew who Jesus was. You understand? What? How could somebody offer you 10 pieces of silver Hallelujah. To betray somebody that owns all the silver. You mean to tell me that you that simple minded? You've been with the man that told Peter to go look in the fish mouth and get some money and pay our taxes. And you're going to betray a man that can put money in a fish mouth for 10 pieces of silver? Something wrong, ain't it? What happened? He entertained the devil. When you entertain him so long, he's going to enter through your heart. Because he knows your heart is already deceitful and desperately wicked. And you don't know. See, Judas, just like us, we don't know how bad and low down we really are. We think we ain't so bad. Oh, I wouldn't kill nobody. Let me tell us. Everybody in here, including me, will kill somebody if we got the right weapon and when somebody make us mad enough. That's why I refused to ever own a gun long before I got saved. Because I would get angry. And when you get angry, you do things you ain't got no business. Then when you wake up, you wish you hadn't done it because of that no good heart. And if somebody pushed the right button, you're going to do it. That's all it takes. Push the right button. Don't y'all know we all ain't but a snap away from losing our mind? It's only because of mercy of God that we ain't here and, and half of us still ain't in our right mind. And some of us halfway there, but the few that are in their right mind, it's only because of the mercies of God. Yeah. The fact that you don't want to be saved, you ain't in your right mind. Why would you want to give up something? I'm telling you the best in the world, but you saying it can't be all that good. Well, you ain't never tried it. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you try it? What you got to lose? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. He said, now, Satan that entered the heart of Judas, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus know he's getting ready to die. The next verse, he said what? Jesus knowing and that he was come from God. In other words, Jesus, it wasn't phasing Jesus because he know, I know what I'm here for in the first place. Listen, let me tell you something. I know me preaching the way I preach, folks ain't going to like it. I know that. So folk not liking that, that don't mean nothing to me. I already know that. That's my job. So folks not liking what I say, I say hallelujah anyhow. But you can walk out of here and say, you ain't going to say John said it. You're going to say the Bible said, come on, thank you, Jesus. I got another one for you. I love this one right here. Um. Let's look at verse, the same chapter. Look at verse, do I want to read this, Lord? No, I'm, I'm going to skip that. Go to Acts, the next book over, chapter 5. Let me show you something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I can't preach no jubilee messages for you. If you love God, this will make you shout. 
Amen. You shouldn't have to let me preach about blessings and all of that. Hey, let me tell you this. You can save and live holy, man. You get all the blessings there is. I can preach your money. You can get the money blessing, but you're out of blessing when you go broke. <laughs> but you get the Holy Ghost and serve God, you ain't never going broke. Oh, hallelujah. And you know what? Money don't mean nothing. Oh, hallelujah. But see, y'all y'all trying to get items. Y'all want to get particular things. I want the whole enchilada. Give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Give me salvation. Hallelujah. Give me the love of God. Give me something that's going to keep me full all the time. Y'all just want pieces. He going to sell out five pieces of silver when he had the man that made all the silver, that made all the gold. And you're going to go to a man that's going to give you five pieces of silver. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all run around, y'all run around grabbing man and woman and jobs and all of this other stuff for pieces. That's pieces. I want no peace. I want the whole thing. Give me the one that provides. I tell you what, uh, Mr. Priest, whoever gave you them five pieces of silver, whoever made, I want the man that made them. Give me Jesus. Give me the man that can get money out of a fish mouth. Hallelujah. Give me the man that got devils running. I want that man. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Acts chapter what? Five, verse one. Read. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostle's feet. Now, they done sold their property, got all this money, but then they're going to say, well, we're going to act like we didn't get this much money. We ain't going to tell them, but we got a little bit. And she's agreement with it. God said, I'm going to kill both of you. Come on. Verse 3, he said what? But Peter. Come on, let's read. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan, why has who? Filled your heart. To lie to who? No, no, no. He talking to Peter. Ain't he talking to Peter? So how Peter going to say you're lying to the Holy Ghost when you're talking to Peter? How are you lying to God and you're talking to a man? Are y'all reading that? And that's what he said? Verse 3 again, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thy own? Wasn't it, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Ananias. Ain't this yours? You could have just said, all I'm going to give you, Peter, is 50,000. I got 100, but I ain't giving up a 50. But you act like all you got is 50. It's a lie. Oh, hallelujah. Because Satan get in your heart. Now, when you come to, now, I, I, this wasn't on my mind, but see, you come to church and act like you ain't got no money. Well, the, the, the preacher asking for money, that's all I got. Now, who you think you just lied to? Just say, I got it, but I ain't giving it. God would prefer to hear you go that route than to try to act like, I don't know what you got. Oh, hallelujah. I don't need to know what you got. He knows what you got. You lying to the Holy Ghost. You're lying to God. Why have Satan filled your heart? You know why Satan could fill his heart? Because he's stingy. He's a crook. And he's a liar. That sounds like all the attributes of who? Satan. But you wonder why you are the way you are? Because you entertain what he tells you to do. You done got so good at it, it become a way of life for you. But you don't realize you're in danger. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. I, I could read a lot more than that for you. Let's go to Peter, chapter 5. I got you. I, you got to read all of this stuff. I tell you what, let's do James first. Come on. Keep going forward. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep you going forward. Thank you, Jesus. James is almost at the end of the Bible. The book of James. Hallelujah. Chapter 4. Y'all don't let Satan get to you. All of y'all that got these bad attitudes, all of y'all that got these, 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 these lying spirits, all of y'all that got these gang banging attitudes and gang banging spirits and dope selling and whores and whoremongers, all of y'all that love sleeping around, all of y'all that love lying, you love stealing, y'all been, listen, y'all been molded and shaped by the devil and you don't realize it. You know, there's, there's a little bit of good in everybody. <laughs> the, the Bible says there's honor among thieves. Thieves get together, certain things they won't do. Me and you get together, certain things we won't do. 
But at the end of the day, we all are low down and no good. We just got restrictions. We all got our own restrictions. Everybody got different restrictions. But we all will do something we ain't got no business doing. Because we've entertained the devil. Oh, hallelujah. You got to get the devil out of your mind, out of your face. Out. That's why the Bible tells you that if you save, you can't hang out with sinners. That don't mean you can't talk to them because I can't convert you if I don't talk to you. But I can't hang out with you. I can't go to your parties with you. I can't even hardly have lunch with you too often. You understand? I can't run in and out of your house just because we, we relatives. I'm going to, I'm going to see my, my daughter tomorrow. And she said, well, she said, well Daddy, uh, fr some friend of ours in New York asked us to come to New York on, on uh, Thanksgiving Day. I said, well, honey, I ain't got no problem going as long as there ain't going to be no drinking and cussing and loud music. She said, well, Daddy, they don't do that much. I said, baby, let's get something straight. Your daddy is a pastor. Your daddy is a preacher. I said, I live holy. I said, one curse word is too much for me. Amen. Well, they ain't going to have nothing but little wine. I said, baby, you must don't seem to hear what I'm saying. I don't want none of it around me. I don't care if it ain't but one drink. I don't care if it ain't but one curse word. I'm ready to walk out the door. I don't like being in the presence of junk. I don't care about your feelings getting hurt. I'm trying to get to heaven. My, listen, me going to hell or heaven is more important if I hurt your feelings or not. So I don't want to go. So I asked, I said, so are, 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 are y'all going? She said, well, we don't know. I said, well, I need to know now. I might cancel my ticket. I'm not coming way out there for y'all to go run off to a party and gonna leave me at home. I can stay at home and be at home. I ain't got to spend $500 to find this out. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just showing y'all how serious this is to me. This is serious. Y'all think it's a joke. Ain't nothing wrong with being around people smoking. Smoking turns my stomach. Make me want to puke. Marijuana make me want to puke. Probably don't smoke more dope than all of y'all. Ever, 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 don't ever smoke. I don't like it no more. And I don't want it around me. I can cuss just as good as anybody else. I don't cuss no more. The devil can't get me to cuss. You think he don't throw curse words to my mind? I don't entertain him. Like, no, man, get out of my face. I don't do that. But y'all holler, well, I, it ain't going to hurt this time. All right. I ain't never known nobody to do one sin they like once. You know what I mean? You go, you go, you're going to do it again, again. The more you do it, you, and then you say, that's a, well, I do that. Now, see, now I'm going to tell you, you're a lie. Because the Bible says a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. You do a little bit, you're going to do a lot. Just a matter of time. See, I can, I can knock down every, every second thought y'all put in your mind. Now, you may say, it's not me. Well, the Bible must be lying then. Since I know there's no lies in the Bible, you can imagine who I'm going to believe. James, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. James chapter 4 verse 7. What does it say? Submit yourself. Resist the devil. Resist him. Resist him. What you mean when you say resist something? That means it keeps coming back, doesn't it? Keeps coming back. You got to resist. Keep coming back. You keep resisting. After a while, he did that to Jesus. The Bible said, and, 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 and the devil left him for a season. Meaning he coming back. Now, if he came back and tried to tip God, oh, hallelujah, you don't think he's going to come back and try to tip you? He know Jesus was God. He know Jesus wasn't making no mistake, but he tempted him again and again. But you, little old weakling humans like us, you think God, you think the devil ain't going to come back and try you again, huh? Amen. Got you already strung out. And you think he ain't coming back? He didn't get Jesus to do nothing and came back. You don't think he's going to come back and tempt you? But he said, all you got to do is what? Resist him. How many times, oh, I love it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How many times, I love this. How many times all of us have resisted some boy or some girl? You didn't like them. You resisted them. You didn't want them. But they wanted you. But you kept resisting them, didn't you, Teresa? Kept resisting them. <laughs> After a while, they disappeared, didn't they? But you had to keep resisting. And some of them were some pretty bold fellas, wasn't they? But you kept resisting. I don't want him. I don't like you. Whatever you didn't like about him, you didn't like. Find one thing you don't like about Satan and resist him from now on. 
I don't like the fact that he don't like God. That's enough for me. I don't like the fact that he don't like me. I don't like the fact that he was in heaven and told God, I'm going to become God. Like, what's wrong with you? He, he made you. I don't like the fact that he made me a drunk. I don't like the fact that he had me sleeping around with a whole bunch of women. I don't like that. I could have caught AIDS and died. Look, look, look what he was doing to me. I don't, I don't like the fact that he made me an excellent cheat when it came to cars and dice. I could have got shot. Look how bad you made me, man. Oh, hallelujah. I don't like you. So I'm not going to entertain what you say to me. You done tried to kill me. No, you done tried to kill me too many times. How many of you done had a girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife that cheated too many times and you got rid of them? After a while you go, no, 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 no. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'm not trying to make you laugh. I'm trying to make you see you need to get the devil out of your face. But y'all love him. That's why you keep listening to him. You know the devil ain't doing you no good. But yet you'll listen to him about buying a gun. No, you ain't. You know what? You know you're gonna kill somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Walking around talking about you bad. Put the gun down. Let's see how bad you are. Come on, verse 8. He said, What? Draw nigh to God. Draw nigh meaning near. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify. Purify what? That means your heart is messed up. That means you got to do something. Purify your heart. What's the rest of that? He said what? Double-minded meaning you think you ain't so bad, so you do some good. So a lot of y'all going to feel like you did good because you came to church today. If you don't let it profit you, coming to church was a waste of your time today. Y'all understand that? I'm going to just be honest with you. If you don't let it profit you, it was a waste of your time. You could have went on and got drunk and watched football or whatever you wanted to do. You just wasted your time. But see, here's the good part about it. The word of God still got in your heart. You can't ever prevent that. What you hear today will always be in your heart. You can never dispel that. That just, listen, that just ground for God to kill you now if you want to. Because now you can't say, I didn't know. you. I said, you're a lie. You remember John talked to you on November the 21st, 2010. Didn't, didn't, didn't I have a preacher to tell you all that stuff? And then you're going to stand there and tell him, no, you can't say that because you remember. You just chose not to do it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. One more. Well, I ain't going to say one more because sometimes that ain't altogether true. Uh, First Peter. Go over a couple of books. One book, rather. First Peter. Let me show you. The devil's entered through your heart. I'm trying to show you. He gets to you because of what you like doing. And he just keep feeding it to you. And then finally one day he just jumps in and take control. Like, all right, I got him now. Oh, hallelujah. None of us, none of us was born being able to be angry as much as we are or as evil. I put it like that. None of us was born being able to be as evil as we are. We learn to be as evil as we are because it's in our heart. But somebody or something in the case of Satan has to come along and keep tapping into that heart. To make you, after a while, begin to manifest what's in you. But it took something, some incident or something, to keep gnawing at you to make you do that. You understand what I'm saying? Because we've already read, it's already in our heart. But God said, all you got to do is clean your heart. Purify your heart. Listen, the water we get out of our faucets is already dirty. Amen? But we put them purifying machines and all them things to try to clean it. We know the water is dirty, but we're going to do our best to clean it. I know there's no good thing that dwells in me, but I'm going to do my best to clean it. I'm going to church. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to stop thinking bad thoughts about people. I'm going to stop calling folk names. I'm going to stop using poison words. Listen, I'm going to learn to obey God because I know ain't nothing good about me. But see, when you walk around thinking something good about you, then you don't purify your heart because you don't think you so bad. Oh, but since I know I'm terrible, 
I'm going to work hard at getting me right. I got to go to church on Sunday. I got to go to Bible class. I got to read my Bible. I got to pray. I got to be nice. I got to give tithe. I got to give offering. I can't be stingy. I can't be mean. I can't be low. I can't be a liar. I can't be a whore monk because I got to purify my heart. There's no need to buy a purifying machine that requires a screen in it and you don't put the screen in there to catch the junk. Then you might as well not buy the machine. There ain't no need of you coming to church, reading your Bible, buying a Bible and never read it. What's the purpose? You don't need it. Oh, hallelujah. But you're going to holler about how good you are and then you, you can't even say a straight prayer. You can't find a book in the Bible when somebody calls, but yet you got a Bible at home open on your table. See, my mama did that junk. <laughs> got a Bible sitting there. About one time did she pick up the Bible and let us read it or read it to us. But the Bible was always there. What's the purpose? What's the purpose? What's the purpose of coming to church today if you don't plan on trying to change your life? What's the purpose? Serves no purpose. You might well stay at home. See, I'm not like other preachers. I ain't trying to fill up a church. I'm trying to get folks saved. You understand? I, I, don't, I don't need a bunch of folks at the church. My prayer is, let me tell you my prayer. This is, this is my prayer. And God honors my prayer. I said, Lord, only send me people that want to be saved.